Hello everyone, my name is Charlie and on my own channel, I've been playing Prison Architect for many, many years and I am delighted now to be working with Paradox Interactive to create some tutorials for you covering Prison Architect 2, a spiritual successor to the fan favorite Prison Architect, but built from the ground up to be a flexible platform that expands prison building into a 3D environment. Oh, I'm excited. Today, we are taking a look at the new building tools and how they all work when it comes to designing multiple floors in your hopefully secure facilities. Let's get started. Construction in Prison Architect 2 begins with the construction menu at the bottom of the screen, and the tools available are used in a very familiar way that you'd expect from playing Prison Architect, with a few notable differences. Foundations are automatically added when constructing rooms, so no more having walls as a separate button to interact with. If you want to simply build a wall though, you can just draw a straight line and the game will do that for you. Otherwise, as we move our mouse out into various boxes, you'll see that walls are highlighted with the dimensions of the structure that we're creating, and these highlights are joined by the floor foundation that'll be created along with it, as well as a roof segment that is required to be built as well in order to make your rooms be considered indoors. And if the floors and roof are already constructed in this area, the highlight graphic will change, omitting the floor and roof from the tool's display. Now, since we are in 3D now and have verticality as an option when planning our prison, the building construction tool can also be used above the rooms we've already built. By default, you can navigate between floors using hotkeys on the keyboard, or you can use the floor navigation buttons on the right side of the screen here, which may also display notification badges if there is something concerning going on in that floor, like prisoners destroying stuff or fighting. If you're building a fresh building design and you know you want two floors already, you can also make things a little easier by just viewing the above ground floor and then toggle the floor lock on construction with the middle mouse button. Then you can start constructing on the ground. The tool will first draw on the ground and then immediately make the second floor available to you if you are building on top of the existing construction design. Middle mouse button again to toggle the floor lock on construction if you want. But remember, to build above the ground floor, your workforce must be able to reach it, and that means stairs. But it also means that the roof of the ground floor has to be getting built as well, so that they have a floor to stand on when they're making the second. Roof segments take a lot of time from your workers, so don't expect large construction projects to be fast unless you hire more people to help out. In some instances, you may not want to have interior stairs made, like in the case of building above a dangerous cell block, or perhaps the route that workers need to take to get over there is just too long to make that construction go at the pace that you'd like. So for that, you can utilize above ground walkways. Simply add stairs in a more convenient place outside, and then construct a walkway over to the building segment that you'd like to build. You can also use this idea to allow prisoners to move between buildings without having to go to the ground floor, or to create something of a multi-floor activity area for your prisoners, like a yard on the ground next to a second floor basketball court, like this. We'll touch more on rooms and objects in the next video. And obviously, to make the interiors of these rooms accessible, you're going to need doorways. In the Doors and Windows tab, you'll start out with a limited set of options for doors, including regular wooden doors, single and double width jail doors, and fence gates. All of these doors can be configured to require keys in order for people to pass through them, but the jail doors are the only ones which have that setting turned on by default. When planning a doorway, that segment of the wall is opened for workers to pass through, and workers will generally wait to construct doors last, making it easier for them to get in and out of the places that they're trying to access. You'll also find window options in here, which not only come with an aesthetic preference, but also are used to help satisfy a prisoner's freedom need, which is a very important need to manage. We'll be looking at prisoner needs together in a later video as well. Another cool design tool that may get overlooked, but can offer some really cool interiors as well as a nifty effect for you, is the gap tool, located right under the walkway tool. While the walkway is great for letting people walk above the ground and still see what's below them, it only works outdoors, since the conditions for it to function aren't often found indoors. But we can change that with the gap tool. This tool will allow you to remove entire sections of flooring from the above ground floor, allowing those on the second floor to now see the floor below. This can also allow you to have those really tall ceilings in a room, if you want that for some reason. 
This can be a great way to build a sort of catwalk for your guards or to just style it so that prisoners can banter back and forth between floors like you sometimes see in the movies. This isn't just for looks because your guards do have a conical vision of the floor below them and can respond to events that happen below as well. They can even shoot down from the high ground, which is precisely how the conceptual guard tower exists now. Rather than as a placed object, we now use the walkways and this tool to create our own guard towers strategically and in whatever capacity and size that we want. Use high ground and walkways and station your snipers up top. Lastly, but definitely not least, let's take a look at a crucial part of smooth prison design, utilities. Yep, power and water. Now back in the construction menu and inside the utility tab this time, you'll see the familiar power station and water pump station. These provide power and water to your prison and will scale to a pretty large size facility before needing another. After placing them anywhere you wish, you'll then need to run electrical cables and pipes from them out to the various uh, objects that require what they offer. When something requires power but doesn't have it, you'll see this power symbol appear above the object, and it will not be functional until the power is provided. The same thing is true with objects requiring water, except it's this symbol here instead. Now, electrical cables act just like they did in the original Prison Architect, hooking up objects to power within an area of effect. But unlike the original game, in Prison Architect 2, water pipes act the same way. No longer do you need to run pipes to tag up on individual items. Instead, pipes offer water in an area around them as well, with large pipes being able to run a very long distance and cover a much wider range than small pipes, which have a significantly reduced range this time and offer water to a very narrow area around them. Another difference is that only the large pipes are available to the player initially, with small pipes being locked behind the water delivery unlock in the second tier of the infrastructure research. In a way, small pipes in this game are treated as a security upgrade, as prisoners can still crawl through large pipes if they reach them for a significant speed boost to their tunneling efforts, but they cannot do that in small pipes. Also note that prisoners will still need to tunnel all the way to the large pipe to reach it for that speed bonus, even if the large pipe is close enough to provide their toilet with water. There's one more thing though. Because we have verticality in this game, vertical cables and pipes are here. In order to get power to the upper floors, you don't need to put a new utility system. Instead, you can tap into the setup that you already have on the ground by connecting a vertical cable or pipe to your existing setup. Now, on the upper floor, you can then continue to spread your grid just as you did before with the vertical pipe as your upper floor's connection point. And of course, if you ever need to remove a power cable or pipe, the same remove pipes and cables button is here where we remove all utilities. But in Prison Architect 2, you can simply right click drag with the pipe or electrical tool selected and it will mark only that type of utility to tear down. So now if you're like me and you like to stack pipes and cables on top of each other, that's how you remove only one of them without tearing down both setups. Later on, you'll also have access to a fuse box, which acts very similarly to switches in the previous game, allowing you to turn power on and off in given areas to give you a bit more control over your power flow in your prison. Oh, and if you have a design that you really like, check out the clone tool here in the construction menu. You can highlight an entire area that you like the design of and copy over the items and the utilities to another area if you like. Building is a pretty basic topic on Prison Architect, and it only gets slightly more complicated in Prison Architect 2. But with the addition of a variety of options in the administration menu, research can be applied in the all new bureaucracy tab to speed up construction projects, reduce the cost of materials, and to expand on what you can use to build with, such as adding glass windows or constructing perimeter walls, hedges, painted doors, or just unlocking the ability to expand the land that you have to work with. There's also a bunch of rooms and objects to unlock that will help you construct a facility that can withstand the ever-growing demands of your prison population, which is exactly what we're going to talk about in the next video in this tutorial series. So make sure you get subscribed here to the Paradox channel so that you don't miss upcoming videos on this flexible and exciting new chapter to Prison Architect. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Charlie. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.